Hey everyone, so we're doing a Stuff We Got in Asia video. We've been in Asia for about two weeks now. I went to Taiwan first for Computex and then Japan. We got a lot of cool stuff from, well, I would say the trade show, but actually none of that was worth our time. But we bought some cool stuff outside of the trade show and some of it is computer hardware. So we're going through all this stuff today and hopefully we'll be testing some of it once we get back to the States. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gamers Nexus Two-Tone Raglan Hoodies, sporting the GN color scheme and a teardown logo on the back with a GN logo on the front chest. These are perfect lightweight hoodies for spring or cool summer weather, and we've just restocked them at store.gamersnexus.net or click the link in the description below. So let's go over the quadrants on the table here. First of all, we are in a very tiny apartment in Japan right now in Tokyo and didn't realize it was this small. So this is our set. You're going to have to deal with it. First thing we're talking about, this was 1640 Japanese yen. So it's just under $16 US and it's a Jones bow part. Now, if you don't know Jones bow, they are a very common case supplier. So they actually supply a lot of the basically finished products to manufacturers like Rosewell, who then stick their brand on it and call it their own. And Jones Bow is more common here in Japan than, I mean, we don't see them anywhere in any, any stateside stores. So this is just an LED heat sink for memory. So you can convert your DDR4 kit into what Corsair, G-Skill, and everyone else in the industry charge a lot of money for. Uh, it's a bit under 16 bucks for one of them. So yes, it's still expensive, but uh, basically, I don't know, we're going we're gonna to try it out just for fun and see if the digital LED is any good or not. But that's a Jonesbow component. We also have from Jonesbow a VF1, this memory kit, I think. This is called the NC1 if you're interested in it. And not sure if it's easily available in the States. But we also have the VF1, which is a graphics card cooler. So we'll open that one up next. So here's the VF1. This is another John's Bow part. I think I, I paid about $34 for this US, something around there. 35, 35.40 Japanese yen, current conversion rates about one USD to 110 Japanese yen. And this they label as the, actually let me read some of the text to you. They label this as a graphics card radiator, which is not factually inaccurate actually. VF1 is a video card assistant cooling equipment for gamer developed by Jonesbow team. The sense of the development of this product is to provide a straight blown air supplement for, <laughs> sounds like a medical device, for those video card which do not have sufficient heat dissipation or inappropriate cooling channels by inappropriate case structure which will cause high video card temperature or high noise level. With VF1, Jonesbow team has tested that the temperature of the video card will drop around five degrees Celsius that's much more modest marketing language than most of the companies we work with. Different figures will be achieved from different hardware. Finally, they state there is a RGB light effect on the top of the VF1. It can not only supplement the insufficient light effect of most video cards throwing some shade, but also provide simple and elegant light effect embellishment to the video card area. This sounds like the best thing I've ever purchased, especially because they're casting shade at the, the video card uh, add-in board partners saying that they don't develop sufficient LEDs. Please do not tell them that, Jones, but we have had enough RGB LEDs for a week. So this is the VF1. I'm actually very interested to test this one once we get back home. Uh, as stated, it's a bit over 30 bucks, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not entirely sure how this one's supposed to mount, but uh, I would assume it hopefully comes with something for VRM cooling or contact. Otherwise, it looks like a brushed aluminum plate on this side, and then just three fans. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Might come with some additional parts for, nope, just cables for LEDs. So we'll see how that goes. Not really sure to be honest. Next thing we got. So uh, let's go through some non-computer hardware items. One of the most fun things that we did in Japan was this game, which I'm gonna, Sengoku, Sengoku Shi Tyson is uh so it's a card game it's actually really cool we have some b-roll of it and i have magic cards in here too let's ignore those so these cards uh we went to an arcade and i i wish we knew more about the guy but there was a guy a local there playing and we bugged him and asked him to show us how to play and he was very kind to do so and even gave us a card that i assume is no good uh so you put the cards on the table and basically it's all nfc enabled so you just move the cards around we've got footage of it to do more or less a, a card-based RTS system in arcade format. So you take one of these cards, put it on the machine, it allows you to play, and then you take your different uh, armies or character cards, heroes, armies, so forth, 
it was all in Japanese, but it's a game and it's more or less able to understand the extremely excruciating Mohi Lan tutorial. But in the top left of each card, there are symbols like elephant for, I think, potentially siege. Uh, there are horses, which are literally just horseback units, archers for ranged units, uh, swords, spears, so forth. And it's typical soft and hard counter stuff like you see in any RTS game, except all the units are controlled with NFC cards on top of a physical board. So you just move them around based on where you're trying to move on the map, which is on the other screen in DS fashion. So it's actually, it was a really fun game even though uh, you don't really even need to speak or read any Japanese, I think, to, to figure it out and enjoy it. And if we had more time here, I'd play it. But uh, so, yeah, we played that one. That was a lot of fun. If anyone knows that, I'd be curious to hear more about it. I think it's got some kind of mana-based system as well, based on the bottom left of the cards. And speaking of mana-based systems, we also picked up a couple of, just to out it for me, out of nostalgia, picked up a couple of uh, magic packs. So we got Masters 25, and I've been out of the game for quite a while, but... Uh, ended up just getting a, a local Japanese language booster pack, basically. And I think we picked up two of those. Picked up the Sengoku cards that we played with at the arcade. That was at the Sega Arcade, by the way. Really cool place. They're like five or six stories, some of these arcades. Another item. So these were extremely popular here and in Taiwan. This is a from a Gachapon machine. And uh, basically, they just are a more controlled form of gambling in that you're guaranteed to get something, uh, but it is somewhat randomized. So Pokemon, of course, very popular. Still got a couple of Snorlaxen out of the ones that I dumped money into. And then I think we have plenty of other ones here. This was probably the coolest thing we got. Uh, Keegan got this one out of a Gachapon ball, but basically this comes uh, disassembled as just a jumble of parts and you assemble it pretty straightforward and get a Gundam out of it. For perspective, a lot of these things cost between 200 and 300 Japanese yen in that range. Uh, some of them are up to 500. Like I think this one was about 500. So uh, that's anywhere from three to five bucks, two at the low end for some of the Pokemon items. We got a couple other ones too. I have a Kirby figure. I have a hamster that goes in a coffee cup from Taiwan. Diglett, Pokemon. Uh, we got a lot of them anyway. Kind of fun, I guess, but there are also really popular crane games here. And in Taiwan, the way they worked is you have pretty bad odds. So it'd be like one coin to play and uh, very low chance of winning even if you grab the thing, because once it grabs it, the claw will roll some dice and decide if it's going to actually hold on to it, even if you grabbed it. And a lot of the time it drops it. However, Ryan, who is with us, did happen to win this, which we've named Creepachu or Peepachu because it spent the last two weeks hanging from various ceilings and to windows and mirrors and things like that in spy positions. So uh, that Pikachu has been with us for a while now and it's going all the way back home. So this is another one of the more interesting items. This one is one that Keegan got as well. He got all the Gundam stuff. I don't know much about Gundam, but uh, this is a turn A Gundam. It's a model for, and it comes partly pre-painted. As with most models, you pull the parts off of the sprue and then assemble it. So this was 1280 Japanese yen. It's about $12 US. Pretty cool find. The store with this stuff was insane, by the way. First of all, it plays the same song on loop constantly and brainwashes you. And then on floor two, there's a bunch of PC hardware, which is where actually I got this Jonesbo stuff. On floor uh, six is basically the giant toy store, which has two entire rows dedicated to Gundam. So we had to drag Keegan out for his own good. And then there's also tons of shelves dedicated to Pokemon, Nintendo characters, Gachapon, all kinds of stuff. It'd be, it'd be easy to spend a lot of money there. That, that was an Akihabara, which you've probably heard of. So pretty cool stuff coming out of there. This one is different and very cool. So this is from EVGA CEO, uh, personally, who gave it to us after we did a tour of his audio setup. We're working on a video of that. He's got a, a really impressive audio setup. Like it's, I mean, there are pieces of equipment in the audio room that are 100 years old, basically. So we're working on a video of it, explaining how all of it works and showing the setup. It's, it's extremely impressive. But this is a Western Electric sound system plaque Western Electric is actually one of the oldest and at one point most powerful companies that has ever existed in terms of modern sound. And 
well, actually one of the most powerful companies, period, when they were at their height. So Western Electric became so big that they were broken up as a monopoly. They supplied military radio devices. They date back to 1830 or even before then, but some of their first products that really gained traction were 1830. And Western Electric worked on things like uh, the horns that you'll see in some of our B-roll. So those are just giant, basically, uh, for speakers. So you put a tweeter in it, a driver, horn, and a subwoofer. So they worked on that. They worked on theater systems. They worked on projectors. They worked on telegraphs and telephones and all that stuff. And uh, they were eventually broken up as a monopoly, I think became just Eastern Electric and maybe North Electric or something like that. Uh, not much left of them these days, but that's a plaque from one of the devices that he purchased for a sound system. We'll be talking about that more soon. Pretty cool, put it on the set wall. And I think other than, that's just a, a neat piece of technology history though. Other stuff we got, pick this up in Taiwan. So these are definitely legitimate, definitely licensed keychains for Thor and the Flash as, uh, as gifts for home. And on the back, it's got definitely licensed high resolution images of each of them. They went as far as to put copyrights on there for DC Comics and Marvel. Really not sure why. We also saw some other things that were not Avengers that were branded as Avengers. Either way though, this was in the Xilin night market in Taiwan. So really cool place if you haven't been. It's crazy, it's just a lot of stuff basically, but kind of fun to walk around if you can get dropped off in the right place by the cab. It's huge though. Uh, so yeah, small items, kind of mixed quality on them, but uh, they were cheap. So we, we talked to the, I talked to the guy and he wanted something like, a, I wanna say 250 for two of them 250 Taiwan dollars, and it's about one to 30 for NTD to US. So uh, you can kind of haggle down though in the night market. It's kind of part of the part of the fun. This is from Japan. So uh, we were told this is pretty good. I'm not sure I believe it, but for coffee drinkers, I guess it's Nest Cafe. And I don't think we know why it's supposed to be good, but someone at home told us it's good and said to bring back some. So that's what we're doing. But if you've heard of it, I guess let us know why it's supposedly good. It's it's semi pre-ground coffee that we found here in Japan. Next item, the let's go with the solar bug. So you'll see this video soon if you haven't already. Probably have already by now. Uh, so solar bug is something that I or actually was purchased for me by Sasha, our tour guide in Taiwan. Sasha was awesome. He's featured in the awards video as well. Received the final award and the most important one. And uh, this is just a solar power, I mean, you shine a light on it and it walks. That's all it does. It was in one of the markets though. It was in uh, Guanhua Digital Plaza. So that was just kind of a cool pickup for a couple blocks. And then this one is the transforming with transformers text. And it's also a solar robot, except it transforms into a T-Rex, a robot, a drill machine, or a rhino beetle. And just thought that would be fun to bring home. So some more tech items that we're gonna be testing. This is from Aki, Aki Habara also. This is just a set of heat sinks. I liked it because they were about MOSFET sized. So we can stick a bunch of them on a video card for MOSFET cooling in very targeted areas. And also they're purple and blue, but I think they are probably anodized aluminum. It's not gonna be as effective as pure copper or something like that, but it'll still be fine. It's still 205 watts per meter Kelvin at 25 degrees Celsius. So better than most things. And then uh, this is just some Sanwa Supply Thermal Paste, which was about $5. They claim that it is two grams of 6.5 watts per meter Kelvin Thermal Paste. Basically just wanted to buy it because it was relatively affordable and wanted to see how it performs against some of the name brand stuff that we have in the States. This is a Japanese Craftsman Spirit brand part. So there were a lot of these in the market that we were in, in Akihabara. And this was uh, about 16 bucks. It's an M.2 SSD heat spreader and heat sink. And um, as we've seen in the past, those have questionable performance at times, but I think this one will perform better than some of the motherboard ones. So we wanted to buy it and try it out. It comes with a thermal pad and a heat sink for the SSDs. As always, you really just want to cool the controller in there, not the flash, but we'll give it a shot anyway. A couple more things here. A Dragon Ball from a gumball <laughs> vending machine. A Pokeball that's in stress ball format, a uh, small Lego thing. These are all gotchapon machine things. So just kind of fun to sink money into when you need to get rid of coins because there's a lot of that here. These are cookies from our favorite bakery in Taiwan. 
I don't know the name of it. It's a bakery and it's in Taiwan. It's near Aromo Cafe. If you live there, check it out. It's across the street. Um, tell them we sent you. They won't know who we are. Uh, so those are really good though. So I'm bringing those back. This is Hikari Sweat. So this saved me last year when I started feeling very bad after we landed. And it's basically like a Gatorade equivalent with an awful name because it's, it's got the word sweat in it. They call it an ion supply drink, but it, it takes a bit of accommodating to get, or it's a bit of getting used to, but it's an okay drink overall, kind of like Gatorade. Picari Sweat we knew about because they sponsored a bunch of Brood War teams back in the day. So if you know StarCraft, that's where we first heard of it. And then we also, uh, Keegan picked up this. He's, he's got a taste for Asian alcohol, I guess. What is this? Paint thinner. Paint thinner. Okay. Uh, this is Taiwanese equivalent of baiju. Okay, so it's it's paint thinner that I'm t is a Taiwanese equivalent of baiju. And uh, last year Keegan was gifted from one of our uh, tour guides. It was just a he was a tour guide actually 2 years ago, a tour guide in China not affiliated directly with any of the companies we work with. He is a runs a factory that makes a bunch of electronic parts four companies that we work with. And he was giving us a tour. He bought, I guess, paint thinner for Keegan at the time. And so Keegan's now replacing that. What is the, how much is this? This is 800 Taiwan or Japanese? Uh, yeah, NTD. NTD, 800 NTD for that one. And that's a one to 30 if you want to convert it. And then this one is? Shochu. Shochu? Yeah. Shochu, what is shochu? Uh, distilled Chinese rice wine. Distilled Chinese rice wine, apparently for this one. So we're gonna bring those back and I'm gonna bring back Picari Sweat. That tells you about everything you need to know. Uh, everything else, I think we've gone over all the cool stuff. So as always, I would say links in the description below, but there probably won't be any. <laughs> Just subscribe for more content. Go back and check our CompuTech stuff if you missed it. This is the last thing we're shooting here in Asia. We'll be back. We've been gone for about two weeks now. So uh, yeah, we're done. We'll, we'll be working back on normal content pretty soon. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus helps out directly. Store.GamersNexus.net to pick up mod mats or other cool items that are sadly not any of these. I'll see you all next time.